Thank you very much, Stefan, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation today. I'm glad to be there. So today I'm going to present the main conclusion of our recent series at Deutsche Bank on the future of payment and the impact of COVID on payment. Okay, everyone can see my slide? Yes, okay. So why do we care about payments? So the digital payment revolution is uh, rooted in the 2008 global financial crisis. And at that time, liquidity in the financial system is low. People are struggling to borrow money, liquidity is uh, very low, and they are distrusting the banking system. So since then, regulation over the traditional banks has definitely strengthened, and, uh, but at the same time, most fintech players have operated below the radar and have not been subject to the full array of banking regulation. So what we can see on this chart, the number of deals and the amount of cash capital raised for payment innovation have strongly accelerated in recent years. And today we have about a third of capital raised, which relates to the payments industry. So that's absolutely massive. And as you can see on the chart, the growth in the sector over the past 10 years has been just phenomenal. Global payments revenue have nearly doubled in the last 10 years to almost $2 trillion. And uh, unsurprisingly, the Asia-Pacific region, due to the mainly to the market side, in China mainly, and mass adoption of new technologies, this represents nearly half of worldwide payments revenue. So what we did at Deutsche Bank, we made a survey uh, of uh, more than 3,600 customers in the US, the UK, Germany, France, Italy, and China uh, to forecast trends in cash, online, mobile, and digital currency. So what I'm going to try to do now is to put the introduction of payments in the broad perspective in, in the long run. So let's move to the next slide, a brief history of payments. So this is my very scientific way to introduce where I think we are and where we would like to be. So here um, we have uh, on the left hand side this kind of dinosaur, which is similar to uh, what where we are currently, so the current system and uh, the banking industry services are expensive and uh, we have like a lot of big banks and we have also many people around the world who are like these uh, rodent thinkers that you can see and they are like mostly entrepreneurs regulators and banks and the question that we have is how to make the payment system much better so most of us have an idea where we would like to be. So we want to move from this point A, this dinosaur, to this very nice gazelle, point P. And the question, the next question is basically, how can we move from point A to point B? And at the bottom, we have the FinTech path, which basically is represented by the mouse. There are like tiny companies, FinTech companies. There are many, and they are moving where their goals. So we made this big survey, and in terms of payment trends, we have seen two main trends from customers. The first trend is the medium term trends, and the second trend is more long term trends. So, regarding the medium term trend, what we see from customers is basically plastic cards is going to disappear before cash. And newly issued cards, as uh, we all are aware, especially in Europe, uh, newly issued cards include nearly all the contactless feature. So what we noticed, uh, which was uh, interesting, is the stark differences across regions. So for example, China skipped the cards, the credit cards, while uh, they started mobile payment very early in 2004, and uh, in the US, the contactless features has just arrived, while in Europe, we have been using the contactless feature for more than a decade now. So in terms of longer trend, uh, what uh, we think uh, is the cash could be replaced by digital currency, they are good substitute. 
since uh, we both have uh, anonymity and uh, people have a trend, a preference, a strong preference towards uh, digital payment. So in terms of cash, what we saw is uh, that still cash is widely used in many advanced countries, especially in Japan, Western Europe and in the US. We have around a third of consumers in developed countries we consider cash to be the favorite payment method. Around 60% of uh, people think that cash will always be around and this is true across the board, regardless of country, gender, income and age. Americans, British and Italian, uh, all of them favor cash, but uh, they prefer the credit card. And Americans still use cash extensively. Around 70% use cash every week and plan to use even more cash in the next six months. And half of Americans want to make sure they always have cash with them. But uh, cash is definitely declining. And the best example that uh, we can quote is probably the case of uh, Sweden, where cash in circulation now represents only 1% of GDP. And uh, in February 2020, Sweden uh, revealed that it began its first trial of the e and is expected to become the world's first uh, cashless society by March 2023. OK. So this was the trend that uh, we expect to happen. And this has already actually started uh, with the COVID. The COVID-19 has accelerated the uh, existing trend. And we can see that cash is not immune to COVID-19. And uh, there is actually little disagreement uh, in the society that uh, physical currency can serve as a vector for transmitting pathogens, much like a mosquito. And studies that I have pasted here have shown that banknotes and credit cards, like actually any other surface that a large number of people can touch, can also carry viruses or bacteria. So here I have pasted the result of a recent study that suggested that the COVID-19 can survive on plastic and still for up to three days after the contamination and on cardboard and copper for a full day, for more than 24 hours. But actually smartphones are not necessarily a better option for avoiding germs. And uh, we also have preliminary results showing that the COVID-19 can survive up to a week on the smartphone screen. And researchers showed that 92% uh, of phones and 82% of ants had bacteria on them. The good news is uh, when you have a smartphone or a credit card, it's much easier to disinfect and uh, this helps preventing the spread of disease causing microbes. But as you can see on the second chart on the screen, uh, we also have unprecedented public concern from cash and cards transmitting viruses. And globally, the number of internet searches for cash virus has peaked tremendously, and uh, especially in uh, March and April. So following uh, this uh, big concern, this big unprecedented public concern, central banks have responded uh, in different ways. Some central banks like uh, in the UK, Germany, Canada and South Africa have actually actively, actively communicated that risk were low and people should still use cash. Other central banks like China, South Korea, Hungary, Kuwait and uh, the Fed have uh, taken further precautionary measures like destroying banknotes, like uh, disinfecting banknotes as well for some of them. And other central banks like in India, in Indonesia and Georgia, they have explicitly encouraged cashless payments. So over the short term, the virus may definitely continue to accelerate trends to switch to digital payment. And uh, what we could see uh, probably is like the effect on the payment system in Asia could be felt much sooner in Asia than in Europe because they have uh, a younger population and uh, 
population which is more likely to use digital payments since they are used to pay digitally via their mobile phone than in Europe and the US. And the risk of infection means older generations may more actively seek digital payment alternatives. So, so this is what we see. And actually, we it's very early to make any predictions, but we are already seeing some visible sign in what we observe. So regarding cash, uh, we know from various surveys that around 60% of Brits are using cash a lot less, and especially when it was the lockdown. And um, half of the Brits using it and using it methods. And the change seems set to continue with nearly 80% of uh, those who are surveyed saying that they think the crisis will affect their future use of cash over the next six months. So cash is definitely far from being dead. In terms of the cards effects, what we can see is we are actually definitely moving to contactless and uh, to reduce physical contacts and queuing at checkout, contactless card payments limit have also rose to 30, from 30 to 45 pounds across most European countries a month ago. And things are already starting to evolve. So just to give you a few examples, in Germany over the past few weeks, more than 50% of card payment have been done via contactless and uh, there were only 35% in December. And this is the same in France, card payments rose by 30%. And contactless payment via smartphone in France rose by 60%. Around half said they will use more cards, and uh, while 44% will use contactless or mobile payments even more. So, this was for the card effects. So, we are definitely moving to contactless. And uh, the third effect that we see is the mobile effect. So we moved from a nice to have to essential, and I would say from a vitamin to a vaccine in 2020. So in the US, uh, in April, due to the recent stimulus payment uh, in the US, new mobile banking registration jumped by around 200 percent over the daily average in March. And the draft of the COVID-19 stimulus bill first included and then discarded the creation of the digital dollar wallets. So this is something that which is coming. And um, in in my view, mobile fintechs continued growth caused by the COVID. And they are there for four reasons, because uh, markets are increasingly volatile and investors want to check their stocks more frequently. And uh, we also see an increased digital payments and basically buying happens digitally online or via contactless payment in person as uh, cash is deprecated. And uh, third reason is probably more quick and short term loans. And uh, the fourth reason is basically because BRICS and mortar banks branches have closed during the, the lockdown. So the fourth thing that we are seeing is that over the medium to long term, Concern of handling cash will certainly add to the calls for central banks to develop central bank digital currency. And uh, this is something that already started before the COVID-19, but the COVID-19 will uh, probably speed up the existing trend again. So in terms of uh, central bank initiatives, so over the past two years, worldwide central banks have multiplied their digital cash initiative. And uh, today we have around 80% of central banks which have been or are developing a central bank digital currency. And this work goes far beyond research. So just to give you two stats, we have, according to, bank, to the Bank of International Settlement, around 40% of central banks which are experimenting with proofs of concept and 10% of the central banks are already running pilot projects. And even more impressive, looking ahead, uh, the Bank of International Settlement estimate that central banks representing about a fifth 
of the world's population are likely to issue a general purpose central bank digital currency within three years. And actually, this process is already in motion, like most of you already know probably here. And uh, especially in China, the former president of the People's Bank of China, Li Luhi, hoped that a digital currency efficiency, cost effectiveness and convenience would make it especially desirable during an epidemic. And uh, according to media, the People's Bank of China, in collaboration with uh, private companies, completed development of the central bank digital currency basic function. And China already began trialing payments with Starbucks and uh, McDonald's on board to major cities recently. And uh, of course, China has, uh, is, it's a big market with more than 1.4 billion inhabitants. So if uh, central bank digital currency in China is adopted, this uh, will have a massive impact. And uh, we, so this is for China, but uh, in Sweden as well, in February 2020, as we see, uh, the pilot test has already started. And in the US, the drafts of the COVID-19 stimulus bill first included and then discarded the creation of a digital dollar wallet. And uh, we probably believe that uh, the US Federal Reserve could use a digital dollar and digital wallets to send payments to individual and businesses. So as uh, I mentioned earlier, if uh, China managed to, to build a central bank digital currency, this could have a massive impact on the economy. And uh, of course, if we consider only the central bank digital currency, only the digital currency itself, we don't really think it should change much on the RNB internationalization. The thing is, if we consider it as a broader context between China and the world is also changing at the same time. And the launch of the Chinese digital currency could definitely gain global significance because of China's standing as the world's second largest economy. And uh, currently, we have uh, currently the world consumer spending in China reached 12% in 2019 from 2% in 1980. And China stands as the largest world exporter of goods since 2009. This is also the largest world exporter of goods and R and D expenditure uh, went from 9 billion in 2000 to nearly 300 billion in 2018. And uh, China as well have a very advanced payment system, especially settlement technologies that could attract uh, merchants and companies to, to adopt them. So in terms of uh, adoption rate of cryptocurrency, um, from our survey, we found that a third of consumers have absolutely no idea how a cryptocurrency works, what it is, and only 40% have a partial understanding. And we have noticed a stark contrast between older and younger people, with younger people expressing a much more positive view about cryptocurrency and digital currency. And what we found is that older people have uh, overall more fears, more negative views. They found it harder to understand and they perceive them as a very volatile and low liquid financial instrument. And a large majority of millennials think actually that cryptocurrency are good for the economy and envision using a purely digital sovereign currency looking forward. And interestingly, we also found that uh, more than half, more than 50% of millennials think that uh, cryptocurrency, digital currency uh, could replace cash looking forward. So, and one more thing that uh, we can see here is like in China, 
uh, across the board for all uh, age and generations, Chinese people have bought or sold cryptocurrency much more than um, in Italy, France, Germany, in the US, and in the UK as well. Because they are used to pay digitally. And they have less concern, as you can see from both shots. Okay, key takeaway. Um, last thing that uh, I would say, three main conclusions for cash, digital wallets, and digital currency. Uh, on cash, we found in our survey that cash is still widely used in many advanced countries, especially Japan, Western Europe, and in the US. And it's unlikely to disappear anytime soon. We, we found that 60% of uh, consumers surveyed think that cash will always be around. And this is true across the board, regardless of country, gender, and age. And a third in developed countries consider cash to be the favorite payment method. However, infection risk concern may accelerate the push towards digital payment. And uh, more and more people are paying digitally and uh, with contactless features. In terms of digital wallets, we also see strong differences across regions. Uh, China is used to pay digitally with a digital wallet, which is not the case in uh, Western economies, a bit less. And over the next five years, we expect mobile payment to comprise to fifth of its purchases in the US, which is four times the current level. In terms of digital currency, we still think that digital currency could become mainstream in the next decade. This is uh, something that most of central banks are currently looking at. And this could be used as probably a hard or soft power tool. And if some companies which are doing business in China are forced to adopt the digital yuan, it will probably ever the dollar's primacy in the global financial market in the medium or in the long run. And the uh, last point that I would add, uh, COVID-19 definitely had to cause for government and central banks to move towards digital currency. What next? Um, I would just conclude saying that this will not happen automatically. We cannot move from uh, this dinosaur that we have seen initially to this nice gazelle. And there are many ways uh, how this thing can go wrong. And uh, as you can see, the mouse can become a gazelle, but this is very unlikely. It may more likely that uh, the mouse will become this uh, awful bunny. And if we don't have strategic regulation and alliances forged between banks and fintech players, uh, the mouse may actually become this uh, awful bunny that uh, we have seen here. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any question, I'm more than happy. Thank you.